simple as like list two causes. Like, Cause then we're talking maybe like a, like a T chart. Where we might say causes. list two causes oh. and two reasons it failed. Now we're really literally combining the two. <laughs> have addressed that by that time? Yes. Well, on the 19th, I will. Would you have? Or could you have? I mean, I can make it. I can make it. I can we can change it. I was thinking, that's the only block day. I plan on testing on the 27th. So the 26th would probably be another church as like a review day. Or maybe mm -hmm. even part of the church. The 19th would be the only day that I have to do it, unless I push the test back to October 4th and stretch that through more. Well, but you've also got to provide enough time to intervene with students whom you see are not getting it. That's, that's really the heart of this, too, is going, oh, they're not able to do this. Let me schedule them for high time. Let me do a small group while the rest of the class is doing this. Or let me, if a lot of them are missing it, let me do a whole group review and go, ooh, we gotta go back over this and make it hard. So then let's be, let's be forward thinking with that. If we can do both of these, then this may be something as simple as list two, list two. And if they can do all of that high, if they can't do either low, and then we gotta decide on what a middle will look like. What do you think? Because I know that you probably have a good understanding of like the timeline with the classroom instruction. I just feel like pulling the data out or something like that is in order than if you were to break it into separate questions. You know what I mean? So like, say you put this in on course and you need, or whatever you're going to use, and you quantify like everyone may get a point for doing it. A two, like if the kid has a two, it's not going to tell you like, you're not going to know, well, they got one cause, no effect, or right. they got both causes and no effects. And I feel like it's going to make it, it's going to make transferring the data into high, medium, and low look really slow because you're going to end up having to basically. So when them. you say you give them like five questions, or I say that's your CA that writes five questions, but the five questions have to be about that one topic? Yes. Right? And five is a lot. You really want it to be narrow. Okay, so first of all, yeah, I've never done CA. Right, right. B, I just learned today what CFA is. Right, no, so that's, so that's, that's why I'm like, what is this No, be? that's fine, that's exactly what why we're doing this. What are some examples of CFA? So that's my, why we're doing this. My CFAs are usually three questions, and it's usually a lower order question, an identify question. Okay, uh, so this is making range, this easier for me to get this right. And then a higher order question. Okay. If they get all three, like if they get a three out of three, then they're in the high. Two out of three. So this is literally what you do usually on a daily basis, but you're just recording your answers. Yes, exactly. Okay. There are a million ways to formatively assess a class. Fist to five, all of those little things that we could do. Put your heads down, raise your hand if you feel like you got it, raise your hand if you have any additional questions, whatever. It's really just a way to more formally go about this process to see if the data is underscoring what our anecdotal qualitative assessment is saying. Now we're making it more quantitative and then going, okay, of the ones who didn't get it, now what do I need to do with my instruction? So is there a way to understand, like, this amount of people got number one, not this one? Yes, that's one. why if you're, especially if you do it on Encores, you can run those analytics more specifically. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. A lot of people do um, part A, part B style questions where maybe they give like, a, like an, a paragraph from a primary source document. Like I know Max does this a lot with the SS rate. Right. Primary source document, paragraph. Part A is easy multiple choice, which of the following is um, best communicates the central message of the paragraph. Part B might be, what's your best evidence to support that? So if they can do both, high. If they can do one but not the other. I feel like that's what we should middle. do, especially being that we're doing Napoleon. this Napoleon speech thing. 
That's what I think we should just add our CFA. That's Personally. That's what tends to be the easiest historically, that political cartoons, that media. Only because we're gonna be testing that. Not only just, not only, you know, they're gonna have to be on the test, but they can also. Do you have an extra, I know you have the primary source document, are y'all okay with doing that? Are you okay with that doing that? Yeah. What, do you want for the CFA on the 19th? Mm -hmm. Now, if it's a CFA, the idea too is because it's formative assessment, it should be short, just a little quick yeah. check. So you don't wanna give, the entire speech, you don't want to give the full document. You literally want to isolate it to maybe a handful of sentences even. Would you agree? Yeah, mine is usually, I usually like counting 10 minutes in the lesson at yeah. the most. Uh, to do so, a CFA? Yes, okay, right. just a quick check. So again, y'all bring your exit ticket. 